Hello everyone. Welcome back to Foolish Engineer. Imagine you need a current sensor circuit which will be used at very high voltages up to 300 or 400 volts without needing a special VCC or a supply. Well, if you don't know how you can make it, you came to the right place. Today, we will see how we can design a high side floating current sense circuit using a current sense op amp. So, let's start. One of the key reasons I started this YouTube channel is to bridge the gap between outdated Indian education system and actual skills needed in the industry. I'm excited to share that this video is sponsored by Altium. If you are an electronic student in India, you can get Altium Designer for free under its Altium Student Lab program. It is an advanced electronics hardware design platform. It's a fantastic way to enhance your skill and increase your chances of landing a job in core electronics companies. And with its best feature, Altium 365, you can upload projects to the cloud, manage libraries, collaborate and review with your team. It supports all CAD files, making an electronics design faster and easier. Just use your university email to get started. Plus, you'll receive a student license, a PCB design course and a certificate recognized by top Indian industries. You also get a free access to Power Analyzer by Keysight. I have personally used Altium Designer since the start of my electronics journey and I really recommend it. So don't miss this chance. You can get started with Altium 365 by clicking the link in the description. First off, let's talk about current sensing. Imagine you have a water pipe running from a reservoir and you want to measure how much water is flowing through it. In electronics, measuring the flow of electric current is crucial for monitoring and controlling the circuit, just like measuring the water flow. Current sensing helps us understand how much current is flowing through a particular part of circuit. This is important for applications like battery management systems in electric vehicles where we need to monitor the current to ensure safety and efficiency. Okay, but why high side sensing? What makes it so special? Let's say you are in charge of a dam and your job is to monitor how much water is flowing out to the city. You want to measure the water before it gets to the city, right? This way you can react quickly if something goes wrong. That's basically how high side current sensing does. It measures the current before it flows through the important parts of the circuit. In technical terms, high side sensing means you are measuring the current on the positive voltage side or high side of the circuit before it reaches to the load. The advantage, you can detect short circuits and ground issues before they cause major problems. Imagine measuring water flow from a pipe connected to a tall reservoir. If your sensor is at ground level, the pressure and flow might skew your reading due to the gravitational effect. By placing the sensing element like shunt resistor between the high voltage supply and the load, this circuit avoids interfering with ground reference. It provides a cleaner, more accurate measurement. For such circuits, we use a special current sense amplifier, which can tolerate high common mode voltages. This allows safe operation even in systems with extreme voltage levels, and the Zena diode ensures amplifier supply voltage remains regulated, protecting it from over voltage. This capability is very important for industrial machinery, electric vehicles, and solar inverters where high voltages are common. Without this protection, traditional sensing circuits would not work. The floating nature of the circuit isolates the current sensing path from the system ground. 
This minimizes interference and avoids creating unwanted ground loops, which can introduce noise or error. It improves the reliability of sensitive measurements in noisy environments. The circuit's precise current measurements are converted to a proportional voltage, which can be fed into a microcontroller or control system. This feedback allows dynamic adjustment in real time. For example, in applications like an electric vehicle's motor controller, which can adjust torque based on the current supplied to the motor. And a solar inverter can optimize power output using maximum power point tracking. Now let's see how we can design such circuit and calculate the required component values. So the purpose of this circuit is to measure the current flowing through a load connected to a high voltage source. By using a shunt register to develop a voltage proportional to the current and a current sense amplifier to process this voltage. The circuit provides a clean usable output that represents the load current. For this application, we will use INA138 current sense amplifier from Texas Instruments. If you see the data sheet of this component, it can work only up to 36 volts. So how can we use this IC at 400 volts? And that too without providing a spatial power supply. Well, we'll see that in a minute. We need to measure the current which is flowing through this 400 volts line. The value of this current is between 0.5 amperes to 9.5 amperes. And we need to convert this current to a readable voltage for the MCU or an ADC, which should be between 250 millivolts to 4.95 volts. We'll see what type of components we need to make this circuit. First of all, we'll use shunt resistor. This resistor is placed in series with the load between the supply and the load. It generates a small voltage drop proportional to the current. Next is the current sense amplifier. This amplifier measures the small voltage across the R shunt and converts it into a proportional current output. The INA138 has a high input impedance and excellent common mode rejection, making it ideal for high voltage applications up to 400 volts. For example, in this design. We place a Zener diode at the input which gives stable supply voltage for this op-amp so that it protects amplifier from high common mode voltage up to 400 volts. Then we use an output register R out which converts the current output of INA138 into a measurable voltage for further processing such as feeding it to microcontroller or ADC. And also we'll use a high voltage BJT and it protects the circuit which has high collector to emitter breakdown voltage. But this BJT also should have high beta to minimize current leakage errors. Let's see the calculations and selection process. The shunt register converts the current flowing through it into a proportional voltage drop. The value of R shunt is to balance the minimized power loss and proper signal strength. A smaller R shunt reduces power dissipation and a larger R shunt improves signal strength and measurement accuracy. So it is a trade-off between them. As we know, the maximum load is 10 amperes and the resistor should provide at least 0.5 volts at this current. So the value of R shunt will be 50 milli ohms from basic ohms law. For such current, power dissipation across R shunt will be 5 watt. Next is current sense amplifier. The INA138 converts the sense voltage into a proportional current. So for that, we will use this formula, where GI is the transconductance gain of the INA138, which is 200 microamperes per volts. We can get this value from the datasheet. For maximum sense voltage of 0.5 volts, the output current will be 100 microamperes. Then this output register R out 
converts the current output from INA138 into a voltage output that can be read by an ADC or microcontroller. Assuming our out max required from this amplifier is 5 volt. So this is how we can calculate the output resistor value. As per the datasheet, the op amp can only work up to 36 volts, but we are providing 400 volts to this circuit. And that's where this Zener diode comes to limelight. This Zener diode clamps the supply voltage for the amplifier to 12 volts. And this R3 drops the excessive voltage from the 400 volt line. Basically, we are shifting the ground for this IC so that it will work with the same supply. So here, we can simply use a 12 volt Zener diode. Now, we can see how we can calculate the value of this R3. For that, we need to know how much current should flow through this path so that the Zener diode and op amp works properly. The total current through R3 is the sum of Zener current and the INA138's quiescent current. We'll select a Zener diode which needs 5 mA for operation and the required value of current for INA138 is 108 microamperes. We got this value from the datasheet. So this resistor will drop the voltage of around 388 volts. From the basic Ohm's law, we can calculate R3, which will be around 76 kilo ohms. We should also calculate how much power is being dissipated through this resistor by using this formula. And the power dissipation across this R3, which will be around 2 watts. We should select a resistor which can withstand this much power dissipation. And that's not all. We'll use a high voltage BJT to protect this current sense amplifier from high voltages. The collector emitter voltage of this BJT should be more than 400 volts and it should have high gain to reduce leakage current and minimize gain error. Well, that's how we can calculate and select the components for this current sense circuit. Let's see how this circuit would work. Assuming that 10 ampere current is flowing through this line. So the shunt resistor senses and drops 0.5 volts across it. Then this voltage is sensed by the current sense amplifier and provides the current output of around 100 microamperes. This corresponding current flows to the load resistor R3 and it gives the voltage drop of 5 volts across it. This voltage can be sensed by an ADC and then we can make an appropriate decision. This same process happens during all current ranges. So initially the current flowing through this line is converted to voltage by this shunt resistor. Then this amplifier amplifies and converts this voltage into corresponding current. And finally, the output resistor converts this current from amplifier into a readable voltage for the ADC. And this is how we can design high side floating current sensing circuit. By multiple examples, we can clearly see that this current sense circuit is very useful in applications like electric vehicles and solar inverters. I hope you learned something new from this. Don't forget to check the description for references and simulation files. If you found this video useful, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more exciting content.